Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about pricing and how to price windows. What are we looking for? What's changed? Either way, if you're a window cleaner, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? How are you? I hope spring is coming hard and heavy for you. I hope you had a mild winter. And uh, yes, it's still early, but spring is coming. Spring is coming. So let's talk about pricing just because of that. Now, before I get into pricing in general, I want to let you know, I have the concept that you always should be changing pricing and always working on this. This whole thing is, is that if you, if you meet a window cleaner who's been doing it for 20 years and they're an old timer and they're not on anything, they haven't changed anything and you say you want to go buy their company, their pricing is absolutely terrible. In their head, awesome, man, I'm, I'm doing great. But they didn't change with the market. They don't know where things are. And I think starting off either in a new year, uh, prices should change for inflation in general, uh, and should just be new every time. Every year they start, every new customer that comes in should be at your current pricing. Tell me if I'm wrong. But that's my thoughts. And that's why I always talk about pricing. Because pricing changes, and there is a good baseline for where you should be. Now, the baseline that I talk about should be on the low end. Should be like where you are. This is like nationwide. Um... I mean, I've had people, you've seen them too, the, the the internet trolls of the world that you tell them this is what we charge and they're like, oh yeah, no, in my area, I can only do half. No, nope, you just aren't a good salesperson. You just can't convey your value. You just haven't tried it because you're scared and you can't afford your services. So before anything, understand you're not your target market, right? So when we look at what we're doing, a lot of people, especially in industry that have started a business, maybe like you, have that imposter syndrome where they're, you know, I can't believe I'm charging this much, man. I never pay. This is too much. I just, uh, they're not. If you're unconfident in it, they're unconfident in it. If you tell somebody that, ah, it's going to be like 169 they're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's too, they, I gave you my feeling that it's too much. But if you're like, hey, yeah, it's going to be 169 uh, and our first available appointment is going to be Tuesday the 17th. It will be between 9 and, 8 and 10 in the morning if that works for you. People come to you because you're the professional. They're willing to pay you because of how smart you are. Really. And uh, a lot of people have that imposter syndrome and they kind of, oh, no, it's too expensive. Oh, it's, well, cool. It may be too expensive for some people. It just may be too expensive for some people. And that's totally cool, right? Right, okay. All that being said, let's start it off with residential window cleaning. Residential, commercial, and route are the three types of window cleanings. Real quick, residential, obviously houses. Uh, commercial is gonna be buildings that are done uh, every quarter, every six months, once a year, something like that. And then route is weekly or bi-weekly. Okay, so now we got terminology right. Residential is the one that most people kind of ask about. They send this thing and, and there are people who send me questions on pricing multiple times. Some multiple times a week, uh, some you know multiple times a month, and it's like the same questions. There's three things. If you know those three things, you know all pricing. Like there's variances and there's what we call PETA, pain in the... You know, and there's a PETA tax, and that's something that, okay, you look at it and go, this is what the normal price would be, but this is going to really take a while because of this. You add more for that. But let's start off by saying you should be at $85 a man hour or more. Now, when some of you are going, ah, I make $200, okay, that's cool, but is it every hour? If you do, sweet, high five. I don't believe you, but yeah, heck yeah, if you're making $200 a man hour, that's phenomenal in window cleaning. But that $85 mark should be where you're at. And I know when you talk to people, everybody's making 100, 125. I'm talking about the entire day should be bringing that in. If your guys are out there and hey, they put in an eight hour day, 
they should be bringing in 85 a man hour back. Okay. A, you could speed things up. They could be faster. You could get water fed, which will speed things up. You could uh, put the schedule closer. You could uh, book at a higher price. There's lots of ways to fix that price and get you there, but that's where you should be. If you were under that or way under that, and I'm talking about sit down and look at those numbers. Hey, okay, cool. Yesterday, how long did you work? Well, Maybe not yesterday since it's the middle of winter, but whenever it was, how long did you work? How many hours were put in? I'm talking about drive time and everything. What did you make? If you're not tracking that, you're going to uh, find it a little bit sad at times, right? But residential, I like to charge by the pain. Pain is a piece of glass. Pain equals piece. People go, oh, well, what about a double hung? Well, double hung it look at it as two panes of glass right and if there's storms there's four pane of glass is peace so pain is what we charge by and for the most part most part ins and outs of a pain should be about eight dollars a pain and that's for ins and outs if you're doing just outs it should be like five five to six dollars pain. And they're like, whoa, you don't charge just double? No, there's lots of things. The outside gets dirty faster. I want people to do inside and outside. If I'm already there, I got no drive time. I can walk right up to the windows for the most part on the inside. It's just a lot easier. So that's the difference. But if an ins and out pain is $8, and again, you could totally tell me how stupid I am and you're charging $30 a pain. That's cool. To, it's sweet. But at that price, you should be hitting the $85 a man hour in production. If you're not, look at ways to speed things up, right? I know uh, I haven't done my shameless plug yet, but you guys know as a full disclosure, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. It's what I do, help people get gear and window clean stuff. So take this with a grain of salt. But if you take and you're like, hey, I'm not there yet. Okay, you take a two-story house in residential, now you use water fed, you just doubled your time. You just got twice as much work done in the same amount of time or cut that in half. Now you just doubled your pay. Now are you there? Right? So efficiencies work that way, right? If I can get people faster or better, I can make more money. And don't tell me like, oh, I'm here and I can't do that. You're still a luxury. Even in a small town, there are people who want your services. Okay? Okay. Residential pricing comes that way. Now, that is the glass. That's just cleaning. I remove biological material from the glass. If there's paint or scraping, that's different. If there is uh, screen cleaning, that's different. We'll talk about that at the end. Tracks in a deep cleaning, also different. I'm talking just the glass. Should be at that. Now, if you're new, by the way, if you're new, uh, jump in and say what's up because I love to see new people. But if you're new, you say, well, I got to a job. There's hard water. <sighs> Man, this is going to take me so much longer. I can't believe I only charged that. Hard water is, that's restoration. That's not something you take off. We clean glass. I go, you just leave the hard water? I leave it and let them know that there is an option that they can take. And that's 25 bucks of paint is where that starts for restoration. Yeah, I just do it for free with them because I want them. Uh, that's your thing, but that's super weird. I mean, that's like, you know, again, you could do things however you want, but that's like taking your car to the mechanic, like I need a brake job. And then you get back and it's repainted and the dent in your bumper is fixed. And you're like, yeah, they just, they took that out. Cause you know, we just wanted your car to be good. You'd be like, awesome. Okay, thanks. But that company's not gonna be in business any longer, right? So don't be ashamed to charge for what you're doing. One of the big things that people have also in this type thing is that anytime they're on a job, somebody goes, oh, could you also, well, you're up there, could you do this? And everybody goes, yes, of course, sure. Instead, try this. Yeah, absolutely, it's gonna tack on like 20 bucks for the time, it's not a big deal, I'm already here. Okay, you did the same thing, minimized it and you did it. Like, no one goes to the grocery store, puts everything on there, it all gets checked out, and they're like, okay, great, your total is, uh." you know, $712 or whatever groceries are. Um, and you go, oh, okay, cool. And you take a piece of pack of gum and you go, ah, oh, well, I'm, well, I'm here, I'll get that. 
and they go, oh, okay, and they just throw it in the bag. No, they bring it out. You can add as many things as you want. That's awesome. I'm going to charge you for it because it's just like anything. They don't do that stuff for free. If you want to and you say, Jersey, you're an idiot, cool. Like, that's definitely, man, I'm just an idiot who sits here and talks to no one. I'm a professional talker to myself. So you can do things however the heck you want. So I'm just giving you my opinion, right? That's residential. Now, in residential CCU, that's different. I'll touch on that real quick. And a CCU is two to three times that price. And that's a construction cleanup, by the way. So if you're getting there and it's new construction, you're going to have to do a ton more. You're going to have to scrape every window. You're going to have to really, really, really dial those things in. They're going to take a lot longer. So charge two to three times what your normal price would be. That's construction cleaning. And uh, again, if you're not there, you're charging those numbers and you're not to that dollar amount or more then you need to improve your efficiency. As a side note, my first job I ever did, ever did, it was like my parents' friends owned a business and they're like, yeah, it was a machine shop. It was gnarly. Dude, that job took me three hours and 15 minutes. And I like sweated. It was, it was rough. It was rough. Now, mind you, it was the coldest day of the year that year, and it was in the factory too, so it was like going from 100 degrees to you know, negative 10 degrees and trying to not have things. It was bad. It was my first job. I was slow. It took me three hours and like 15 minutes. We'll say three hours. That job I did every week or two weeks the entire time I owned my company, right? And by year 16, when I sold my company, we still did the job, and it took us about 22 minutes. 22 minutes. Things speed up. You learn. You understand what is needed from you. You know, you kind of get it. There is speed up, and that's not me cleaning anymore. That's now the guys that are cleaning, right? So things will speed up. You'll get more efficient, but keep an eye on that. At least you know what to charge. The commercial pricing is different. Commercial is like that bank, right? That thing that gets done every six months, quarterly, whatever, right? Usually a mid-rise type place. That project, I'm going to be at about $4 a pain for the outs. Now, why the outs and not the ins and outs is what I bid is because 99% of those jobs will always be only the outs. Four bucks a pain. And then I will inevitably get a picture of, you know, a commercial sixes uh, or nines, I mean, uh, three over three over three spandrels. I'm like, what about this one? It's nine panes of glass. Yeah, but it's like one window. Cool. I didn't say the word window. And this is why you don't use the word window. You talk pain because a pain is a piece. It's always a piece. A piece is a fact. A window is a classification. That's like saying a vehicle. You could say eight four-door car and you know kind of what it is oh what about this f-150 that's not a four-door car but it's a vehicle that's why we don't say vehicle that's why we don't say window because a window could be a bay window or a double hung it could be a triple track it could be a uh casement it could be a transom it could be anything and they're all different paints you don't charge by window you charge by the paint and by the way you don't have to tell a customer that right when we do a 20 window special, that's 20 windows we consider a window a double hung. So it's two panes, so it's technically 40 panes for X amount. That's how we charge. So you can charge however you want when you convey the information, but for you bidding it, it's by the pane always. But commercial is $4 an X here, and that is because I know the entire building, I can get it done. Ground level is going to be faster. That's one through three. If it's over three stories, fourth floor, I'm going to charge more. Third and lower, one price. Fourth, fifth, and sixth, I'm charging more. And the reason is because it's going to take me a little bit more time. I still water feed everything we possibly can. Every crew, every truck has a water fed. Do I need to lift stuff? I don't actually even need to lift stuff. But if I did, then I would have a pass-through cost on the lift. And I would charge more because I needed a lift. And they're like, well, I thought you didn't charge less because of water fed. I don't. But lift 
adds time. It takes time to maneuver the lift to the window. That's why you see guys water feeding from a lift. It speeds it up. But we're just talking about normal stuff per pane. They go, well, I got this three-story bank, but they want it done monthly. They want it done every two weeks. Cool. Well, what do I charge them? Well, it's done like route. Route gets charged less. Now, by the way, you have stories on that commercial uh, always, for the most part, almost always has extra floors where route almost always has only one floor. So you got to kind of decide that. Pretty rare, but you got to decide kind of what that makes sense. Again, in commercial, I'm not doing hard water removal. Well, they got sprinklers and they really, yeah, they did. That's crazy, right? I'm going to get everything done. Talk to my contact, my property manager. Man, everything turned out great. I really appreciate this opportunity, but I did want to let you know on that back end, you have a lot of aggregate back there or you have rock or you have sprinklers and they're pretty bad with that water or that hard water. Now, just so you know, in hard water and mineral stains, we do remove those. Uh, we can restore windows. It's going to be $25 a pane if it's something that you have to do. If you guys just look through it and don't care, Cool. Our job is to look at windows and yours is to look through. So if you don't care, definitely. We don't ever have to do anything for them. It will always, you know, look better because we're cleaning them. So put it out there. Let them know. If you're at a burger place, you get everything ordered and they go, would you like fries with that? They're telling you, hey, we have something else. And if you say yes and they charge you for it, you don't go, oh, you're going to charge me for fries? Yeah. Right? Imposter syndrome comes into that. It's so amazing to me that in any other case, anywhere, you go to a store, you go to Best Buy, you go to Foot Locker, you go to whatever. A, you don't walk in and go, hey, uh, yeah, um, I know this is $480, but what if I give you 400 cash? They'd be like, okay, and the $80 would be on a card or we can split it. What do you need to, like, there is no other option. You go into any grocery store and they, hey, your, your total is $284.17. And you're like, okay, what about $250? I, the grocery store up the street said they would sell it to me for $250. That, that last time I got groceries, actually, it was $250. So, oh, geez, okay, well, this is all rung up. Do you want me just to cancel out this order, void it out? That, that, that's, that's business, right? The other side is people think there's somehow like this fluid money thing and in our business that you're just like oh well, i should do it for free so they say yes no one cares to the level you care when you're trying to justify it especially in commercial when you get to commercial people go well this guy wants to do it now quarterly what do i charge the same as every six months well he wants a deal should i knock 20 no they don't care about 20 dollars they just doubled how much they're budgeting for the windows. Like, that's not it. If you're going to try to change something in price, if you want to do that, awesome. Do it. It's your business. But it has to be a change that makes the person buy. It has to be the reason they're buying because otherwise you're just taking money off for no reason. Right? If you say, okay, this job will be $300. And the guy goes, okay, great. When can we do it? And you're like, all right, I'll do it for $250. they are like, okay. Like, it didn't help you. You just lost $50. Right? If somebody in the same realm asks you, they go, oh, it's going to be $250. And they go, ah, can you do it for $200? Like, well, we could take off those other windows here and there if you want, and that'll get you to $200. No, well, we would kind of want the whole project. Then. Okay, well, cool. Yeah, no, that that's $250. Like, just because somebody asks you for that, they're asking, the answer can be yes or no. Okay, great. Well, you, don't worry. You, you don't know if you don't ask. Yeah. And then they pay you the, what you ask, right? People get too caught up on this price. But that's commercial. That's where we're at on commercial. Route, again, storefronts, things you're doing weekly, bi-weekly, that type of thing, is going to be less. And the reason that people don't like route, or you see some hate for it, most people don't hate on houses ever, really, there are people who hate on route. And the reason is, is that route is not uh, a money-making side of it unless you have a route. Now, if you go get the first job, the first route job, it's 15 bucks, and you got to drive across town to go make $15, you could be doing other things. And people go, route's stupid. Okay, it's because you don't have a route. You have a job that's 
very lowly priced. A lot of little windows. If you're cleaning three windows, a route works when you build the route. Now, when your route is so tight, meaning you do this place, this place, this place, this place, get in the truck, drive for 30 seconds, get out, do that, right? That's a route. That's when you start making great money. And you will always make as much money on route as you can on anything else if it's priced right. If your route is tight enough. The cool thing about route is if you do one job, it takes you 30 minutes to drive there, 10 minutes to do the job, 30 minutes to drive back. It means you made $15 in an hour and 10 minutes. But now if you create a bunch of that, now all of a sudden you're already there. You drove 30 seconds, you did the job, same amount of time, 30 seconds to the next place. You just increased that pay from being $15 an hour to being $15 in three minutes. When you tighten your route, get route, sell route, build that route, you're increasing the money on everything. Every job you add into the route, yes, it gives you more, but it makes that route tighter. There was jobs that we had uh, in part of our city, we had like, uh, you've seen like the town homey road type, you know, where businesses are all connected. Our truck parked and was there for over three hours in one spot. It just sat there and the route guy just worked. Boom, 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 boom. Gets back in his truck and then goes. Like that is where the money is. But it takes time to get to that. And you have a lot more competition in route. Our route pricing is $2 a pain per side. I always, as bidding, will bid only the outside. I only want the outside. I want route to be the the easiest, quickest thing that I could do. Boom, 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 drop the invoice, collect the money, go to the next one. If I'm doing inside on a route, if it's a convenience store, ugh, there's like, you know, pallets and packages and everything in front of the glass and signs and you're, it takes you 10 times longer to do the inside than the outside and it doesn't even look any better because the insides nobody's touching or getting anywhere. Anyway, they want the outsides done. I would rather do the outside all the time. That's why I'd always do per side. And I always bid it only outs. If somebody goes, oh, what about the ins too? Cool, I'll bid it. But I don't want it. I want it to be super easy. I want it to be fast. So that's our route pricing. Some of you are charging more on route. Some of you go, well, my minimum is $99 on route. Neat, you're not having a route then. Like then you're just passing up a whole bunch of stuff. Your minimum on a route is for us 15 bucks 15 dollars people go what, what are you doing like why i'm not working for 15 dollars. i make way more than that okay neat but when my guy's out there making 125 bucks an hour one guy in a truck on a route that is done every single week it's almost guaranteed i would 100 percent take that thousand percent route has its place like commercial has its place like residential has its place your hourly is not what has to be figured by pain, but that's the speed at which the pains get done. So when you're putting all that together, it adds up being close. In commercial, you end up making bigger tickets because you're there all day, but break it down. Residential, you're making smaller, but you can match, uh, get a bunch of them in, right? The quality level on a route or on a residential be a little bit higher than say a route route you're going to be back there next week you know don't do bad work but you know by the way one of the things i always say and people love love to hate is when i say you know 90 percent is 100 percent. like people go no if you do great work then you know everybody will call you how in the heck would anybody know that you do great work if they didn't hire you the first time like that's ridiculous if somebody looks through the windows and goes, hey, it looks great. They don't know. I mean, if it looks great, it looks great. If it's clean, it's clean. If they put it under a microscope and see that one is dirtier, than like, that doesn't make sense. It's just people get stuck on the wrong things. But you're going back to hourly. You're going back to services. You're trying to make that truck total with drive and all that. But there's also going to be add-on services. Your add-on services are like gutter cleaning, hard water removal, which we already talked about, screen repair, services that are in your wheelhouse as a window cleaner. And those are all different. Now, minimums 
are really, really where it's at. The minimum on gutter cleaning is 249 for us. The minimum on residential, right? So if like the house itself, this is ins and outs or just outs, is like 199. Minimum on route, 15 bucks. Commercial, I don't know that I even have a minimum because everything's always would be over that anyway. But putting this all together is how you make this puzzle of pricing work. And then people go, ah, oh, what about this one? Okay, is it commercial, route, or residential? Then you know the price. Okay, but, but what about this? Residential, commercial, route. Where does it fall? Here's what you got. Yeah, but what about this one? I got this overhang. I'm really going to have to like work on that. Cool. How much time do you think? Oh, man, that's going to add like a half an hour. Cool. What do you make? 85 bucks an hour divided by two. Now you know you make 42.50 in a half hour. Add on $45. Like, do I put it? No, just put it in the price. If you know it's going to take you that. They, the whole thing is, is that if I do something and it's going to take me 10 times longer, I'm going to make 10 times the money because I'm charging for my time. But when you look at things, you can't always just bid on the time because you don't know what the time will take you. Let's put it all out like that. There is no wrong way to do this bidding. But when you're looking at like, well, the other guy in my area does it for... For, for $20, I have to match. No, you don't. You just have to tell the person why you're not $20. Why do they hire you? Don't tell them why the other company's bad. Tell them why you're awesome. Tell them why you're going to spend $20 on a burger from a steakhouse versus $2 from a burger from McDonald's. Remember in the concept, there will always be people at McDonald's. There will always be people in the mindset to eat McDonald's. They like McDonald's. It's cheap. It's quick. It's there. But those same people will at some point also get a burger from a burger place. And there are people who do not eat McDonald's. You get to dictate the price of where you're at. If you give somebody a price and say, hey, this thing is going to be $200 and another guy said $100, but you didn't say anything else, then the only facts that they know is the price. And that's when they work off the price and that's when you lose it because the other guy was cheaper. Don't tell the world, like, I don't know how anybody competes because this guy's half my price. Okay, why would somebody hire you? Like, truly, why would I hire you for double the price? If you can't answer, they go, yeah, I know, that's what the problem is. Then you don't have your value. Then, yeah, drop your price. Then if price is all you have, then guys can race to the bottom and... Try to be the cheapest, and eventually another guy will come in and be the cheapest, which means you'll drop your price, and eventually you'll be out of business because you won't be able to buy advertising to keep your business going. Cool. Congrats. That's not how it is. That's not how business works. Understand you know what you're supposed to be making an hour. You know what you need to make an hour. Focused on price is just not conveying that information. Will there always be people who want to eat McDonald's? Yeah. You're not going to have to get everybody. It's okay. But we're a luxury business. I'll fight that till the day I die. People think that window cleaning is a necessity. You're overthinking what we do. I'm not ashamed that I'm in a luxury business. That's like, wow, you're a car salesman? Yeah, I'm, I work at the Lamborghini dealer. People go, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People need cars. They don't need a Lamborghini. Right? That's right. It's a whole different experience. It's a whole different mindset. It's a whole different everything. Understand the pricing falls into that play. People are paying you for your time. Why is your time worth what it is? Tell them. 100% satisfaction guarantee. Fully insured. Seven-day rain guarantee. Our techs are amazing. And here's why. Gets a whole thing and go, yeah, this guy's more, but man, wow, he's got a lot going on. I'd rather hire this guy. I know it's going to get done right. Tell them the value. Now, if you're still here, by the way, I have a word. If you're looking, before you comment, comment on the word hourly. Confuse people. And that's always fun. And I forgot to give you my shameless plug and tell you that I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. And this is what I do to make money is put orders in for people. And I would love to put your order in. I know, wait, hold on, before you leave. I know I say this all the time, but you still don't let me put in all of your orders, right? 
do that. It literally takes a second. Even if you say, hey, hitting the, the text button instead of the checkout button to let Jersey know is kind of a pain in the butt. I genuinely appreciate that you would go above and beyond to do that for me. That is literally amazing. Every one of you that puts orders in through me or lets me put your orders in, I'm genuinely appreciative because I make money. It costs you nothing extra, but that's how I get paid. So I would love for that. Uh, my number directs 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone, so you can call me, text me, smoke signals, whatever. But if you click save this cart in your checkout, I can see it. And then just say, Jersey, put my cart in. It's done that easy. I'm like, cool, if the address is still 123 Fake Street, I'll run it, man, thank you. I can also check fitment. I can also answer questions. I can also make sure that what you're getting is right. Ask away. Ask away. And remember, as a side note, if you text me, like some of you do, at 11 o'clock on a Saturday, or any time. We can't ship Saturday or Sunday. I will be able to contact you and put your order in. We'll still go out Monday like any other time. But don't call me 11 on Saturday. Be like, yo, Jersey, my card's ready. And then 11, 12, you put it in. And then don't tell me that. Just, it's okay, be, be patient. We'll get it. I genuinely appreciate it. Either way, until next week, Go out there and price accordingly. Change your prices if you need to. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.